Hello everyone and welcome to Rose Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful churros and if you follow Rose Kitchen, there is no reason to fail. Are you ready? Put your apron on and let's get started. All right, so what is a churros? So, so the churros is made pretty much from a basic dough, which is patachou. A patachou dough, it's a combination of water, butter, sugar, salt, flour, and then at the end, we add some eggs. So the only difference between a patachou and a churros dough is on this recipe, I will add milk instead of the water. And from the patachou base, you could do pretty much um, a lot of uh, great things. You could do chou, you could do éclair, um, you could do gnocchi, a little gnocchi. Uh, today, we are going to do a beautiful churros, right? Let's get started. So today we have our ingredients. So we have our uh, milk over here, um, the water, and the butter with salt and sugar. Um, our flour, and to finish our eggs. And then I have this beautiful uh, vanilla paste from uh, Nelson Massey. Uh, really good um, brands and uh, um, one of the top uh, vanilla bean you can find uh, in the market. So let's get started. Today we are going to add our milk inside our pot. Voilà. Then our water, our butter, salt and sugar. Then for this recipe, I'm going to add one quarter of Nelson Massey vanilla paste. Voilà. So now we want to bring all of those ingredients to a boil, right? All right, so what we want to do pretty much is to uh, bring everything to a boil and uh, in the perfect world the butter will completely melt as soon as the milk start to boil. Voilà, so my butter is completely melted and now it's going to start to boil. So once it's boiling just like that we add the flour all in once and then we mix everything together. And then what I am looking for right now is to dry my uh, patachou, my dough, right? So don't worry, you're going to have a pretty thick, uh, thick consistency. It's okay. Uh, that's what we are looking for. And the consistency is going to get a little bit looser when we're going to add the eggs inside our mixing bowl. So now we want to dry the dough just to remove some of the humidity. And that will help the churros to puff even better. About a couple minutes on the stove, it's enough. Huh? It's pretty thick dough. Huh? Voilà. So now my dough is completely dry. I'm going to transfer it inside my mixing bowl. Then I'm going to use uh, the paddle attachment to uh, cool down my dough a little bit. And once my dough is a little bit colder, I'm going to add the eggs one at a time. All right, so you can see you have the, the steam is going out a little bit. So you want to really uh, cool down your dough a little bit. Otherwise, when you're going to add your eggs, the eggs might start to cook and then you're going to have lumps inside your dough. So you really want to take the time to cool down your dough first and then you add your eggs. The patachou is exactly the same thing. Um, cream puff, éclair, um, Paris-Brest, Saint-Honoré, gnocchi, so many things that you can do with the patachou. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, give more tutorial about all of those different uh, yummy goodies. 
I heard somebody wanted to uh, see uh, eclair recipe, so uh, my might be next in Rule's Kitchen. All right, I I'm usually don't take the temperature because I'm used to make a uh, pata choux, but just for you, I'm going to take the temperature so you kind of have an, an idea of uh, what temperature you should have when you add your eggs. So right now, I'm about 45 degrees Celsius, which is this in Fahrenheit. And then we can add our eggs. One at a time. And you want your mixer in a medium speed. Then when your um, uh, eggs are well combined, you can keep on adding other eggs. Looks like my dough is, uh, is ready now. So what you want to do is uh, always, 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 well, first look at the consistency. Huh? Voilà. So the consistency uh, should be uh, like this and a little bit pointy, not too runny, but thick. Huh? What I want to do also is to uh, scrape my bowl just to make sure all ingredients are well combined together. This step is really important. So. I'm using the, the paddle to uh, pretty much scrape around the bowl. Voilà. And then I pull it back to combine all ingredients together. Looks like it's going to be a churros like you never had before. I can't wait to try it. Mix, mix, mix. Voilà. Now we're good. That's the consistency you're looking for. Yeah. All right. So the way that I like to set up my piping bag is obviously I have a tip, which is a star tip uh, number 868 from Ateco. You can find that uh, anywhere uh, on Amazon, for example. Um, but uh, that's what I'm going to use today. And then I have my piping bag. So what I like to do is first, I will cut um, the tip of my piping bag. Not too much because you don't want your uh, tip to go through it. You want to be stopped by the end of the piping bag. So I prefer to cut always a little bit smaller first and then you can see and you can adjust, okay? So now I have my piping bag. You see the tip doesn't go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit more, just like that. And then even a little bit more. All right. So this is my piping bag. My tip is over here. I have my piping bag. I want to create a block to make sure that my dough will not leak out when I fill my piping bag. So in order to do that, I will just take a piece of plastic like this and I will just put it inside. So this way, you sure that nothing is gonna go through the tip, all right? And then I'm using my hand and I take the top of my piping bag and I fold it like this. And this way, now I can fill my piping bag correctly. The way that I like to fill my piping bag also, this is really important, I like to keep my uh, bag halfway filled, not too overfilled because it's gonna be really hard to push later on the churros, all right? Like this. So now I'm taking my spatula and then I am using my hand to scrape my batter. And you can see my spatula is empty and my batter, it's 
inside the piping bag. So I'm going to do that for the whole dough. We're going to put the dough on the side and then I see you on the other side. Frying time. So in order to fry the churros, you need to have a pot with some oil and I am using canola oil, just a regular uh, uh, canola oil that you can find in any uh, supermarket. And uh, I am going to bring the temperature of my oil to 350 Fahrenheit. That's a perfect temperature to deep fry the churros. It's going to be nice and golden coloration on the outside and still being cooked in the inside. Sometimes it's the temperature of the oil is uh, way too high. You're gonna have a quick brown coloration on the outside, but inside it will be raw. That's why it's important to respect that temperature of frying. All right, so now my temperature is perfect, 350 Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. If you are thinking in Celsius, um, I'm going to uh, start to pipe my churros. So the way that I do my churros is I have my uh, piping bag over here. You see, I am wrap wrapping the top of my piping bag around my finger, and then I put my piping bag with my tip up so my mix doesn't go down. And then I'm tightening my piping bag really well. So this way when I'm going to apply the pressure, the churros baller will be released evenly. All right. So right hand bag, left hand ciseau. And then you can dip the ciseau a little bit in the oil. It will avoid the dough to stick to the ciseau. And then I push a little bit to the desired size, and then I cut. Push, cut. Push, cut. Push, cut. Push, cut. Push, cut. Push, cut. Oh la la! Look at those beautiful churros! All right, so while this batch is uh, frying over here, I'm going to explain you something. Sometimes you have a problem that the churros is cracking like this, okay? Or is cracking like this. Why? What's happening? Well, it's so hot that outside is creating a crust, but then the inside is raw and it's trying to push out, right? So what I like to do in order to prevent the churros to crack is to pre-fry the churros. So this way you can give a really nice, beautiful uh, uh, shape like this. Inside right now is still raw, but it's gonna continue to bake because the outside is really, really, really hot. So I am just going to deep fry them just a little bit and remove them, let them cool down and deep fry them one more time. By the way, one of my neighbor has kids and all of those churros is gonna be for them. They're gonna love it. I can't wait to see their reaction. Also really important to check consistently your temperature of your oil. 350 all the time. Huh? This recipe will make approximately between two to three dozen, depending how long you're cutting your churros. Huh? All right, so a little, um, a little trick today. My piping bag has a lot of leftover. And you know, and when you go like this with your finger and you can see that you cannot take it out. The majority of the people will just cut the piping bag and throw it away, right? I don't like to waste, so this is a little trick just for you. You're going to make sure your piping bag is as straight as possible. You pull it on your table, just like that. And with a ball scraper, you're going to push all the batter this way, all the way down.
And then you have a clean piping bag. Couple more churros. Voilà. And then no waste. That's it. Like brand new. All right. And now that all my churros are par bake, I'm going to go on a second time inside the oil. And now I'm going to bring the nice coloration that I am looking for. All right. Nice and brown coloration. Voilà. Perfect. All right, so now all my churros are deep fry. What I'm going to do is to uh, roll them inside a mixture of cinnamon sugar. You can use only sugar if you like to, um, but let's stay traditional today. Huh? 200 grams of sugar for one tablespoon of cinnamon. I am mixing everything together. Voilà. Boom, boom, boom. Bada boom! So now I'm taking my churros and I am going to roll them individually inside this beautiful cinnamon sugar. Sugar. Is it the favorite word you like to hear? Sugar. All right. And we have those beautiful churros. That's a beautiful looking churros. And you know what? The best way to eat it. It's now. I had to, I had to stop because it's just, they are still warm, you roll it into the sugar. It's uh, really crunchy on the outside, doughy in the inside. You have this nice uh, flavor of vanilla and also a little bit of cinnamon that is coming in. Not over sweet, it's really good. There we go. And this is it everyone. This is how to make a beautiful churros with cinnamon sugar. It's something that you want to enjoy with your family and eat them as soon as you fry them. That's the best moment. Mm. Cinnamon, crunchy on the outside, doughy in the inside, vanilla flavor, bomb. Thank you everyone for watching. It means a lot to me. If you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and to ring the bell so you can be notified each and every single recipe. Until then, au revoir and see you next time.